In this video, we're going to learn how to take green screen footage, composite it over other footage, and then color match it to that other footage so that it looks like it belongs in that scene. And I'm going to show you a technique which removes a lot of the guesswork and gets you extremely close. So let's dive right in. This is the footage that we're going to use in this tutorial. This is not specifically a green screen tutorial, but I'll show you how we can get to the point where we've keyed out the green in this footage, and then we can composite it over our other footage. This step is pretty straightforward. If you don't have this open down here, let's say you have the curves open, head over to your qualifier, and then over to the right, we have the 3D qualifier. And what I'm going to do is draw a line on top of the green in our footage, and that will show us a preview of what we're selecting. So if I do this, you notice how the footage turned black and white, and that shows you what's not being selected and what's being selected. The way that this is set up, whatever you draw over is what you're selecting. In this case for the green screen, that's not what we want. So I'm going to reverse that with this option down here. If we choose our highlight mode, you may notice that despite our best efforts, it's still showing a little green in our footage. So there's two things that we can do. If we want to add another stroke, we can choose the one with the plus. And I can draw maybe another line right there. And it's done mostly a good job. Maybe I can add another line down here. And that looks like it may have cut into the hair just a little bit. So the next step is I'm going to come over to the option down here in the keyer and choose despill. Just so the strokes aren't a distraction, I'll choose this option here to get rid of those. And if we pan around our footage, that looks like it's pretty much a clean key. So just to make sure, what I'll do is change this to fit so we can see the entire footage and I will play through some of it. And I don't see anything strange. I don't see maybe any hair being cut off or anything like that. And I don't see any green coming through. If I take off highlight mode, this is what we see, but we can't leave this here and I'll show you why. If we come back to the edit page and I grab one of those pieces of footage and I drag it under our footage, nothing happens. We can't see what's underneath it. So in order to change that, let's head back to the color page, right click in our node tree area, choose add alpha output and connect the blue on our node to the blue dot over here on the right. And now anything that we've keyed out, we can see through on our top footage to the footage underneath. DaVinci Resolve is a node based system, especially in Fusion and over here on the color page. But as you'll see in the timeline options down here, it's still a layer based system in the sense that anything that's on top of the other footage will obstruct anything beneath it, unless there's some type of alpha layer. What we're planning on doing in this tutorial is making it look as if it fits more into the background than it already does. So in other words, just because you key some footage and then place it over other footage, doesn't necessarily make it live in that universe, so to speak. For example, if you have extremely bright brights in the footage that you keyed and the brightest spots of the footage that you're compositing over aren't that bright, then it will be extremely obvious that you composited the two pieces of footage together. So the technique that I'm going to show you is not something I really invented. It's something that I've seen others teach in Photoshop for years, and I basically just made it work in DaVinci Resolve. So what we have to do once we have everything in place, we have our footage keyed on top of our other footage, is come up to effects and then generator and then solid color. So we're going to grab a solid color layer and drag it over our footage. We're going to change it from the black color that it is now. And we're going to make it mid gray, which is roughly about 127. So I'll slide this up. You'll see now that our red, green and blue here are at 127 and I'll click okay. Now in order for this to make sense, what we have to do is put it into a different composite mode. So I'll come back over to settings. If I come over here on the right hand side to composite mode, right now it's normal, so we can't see through it. I'm not going to explain all the composite modes, but as I scroll through them, you'll see what effect they have on both of those pieces of footage. So the first thing that we're going to choose is color. The next thing that we're going to do is head over to our color page. Make sure that we have the footage that we want to change 
selected, which is our keyed footage. Now, just so this is a little bit more clean, what I'm going to do is actually add an additional node. I can select this and delete it. Connect that alpha, connect that alpha, and we're back to where we started because I don't necessarily want to touch this footage here. And you especially don't want to add a node before this node because what you'll end up doing is changing the green and that will change the key that you had down here. So what we're going to do is use this node to make most of our adjustments. Of course, we can add additional nodes if you really want to make it extremely clean. But for the sake of this tutorial, this should work. So as I mentioned in the beginning, what we can see here is that the bright brights in our keyed footage are actually brighter than the brights in the footage underneath. And one thing we want to keep in mind while we're doing this is that we want to make sure a lot of this makes sense. If there weren't lamps in this scene, we wouldn't have a frame of reference and we may have been able to composite it differently, but because we know a lamp is probably going to be pretty bright, we need to make some adjustments on her. So with that node selected, I'm going to come over to our curves. I'm going to select Y because I don't necessarily want to change the other channels right now. I just want to focus on the luminance. And if I make some adjustments, you'll see how this affects what's going on in our footage. So I can drag it to the left and it will make it brighter, drag it down, it'll make it darker. So in this case, let's try to have her skin be about as bright as this. We have our waveform open on the right hand side and if I make the adjustments, we have that frame of reference. This here is the lamp. So with the way that it was before, you can see, even without looking at the footage and assessing it that way, we can see right here on the waveform that her skin is definitely brighter than that lamp. So I can come over here, bring it down. And a nice thing about adding this other node is we can do a side by side, so to speak. So if I click on the node, this is what it was. And this is what it is now. You may notice that's already starting to fit in the scene a little bit better. Right here on our timeline, this one at the top is our color node. So let me click on this on the left hand side to disable it. And then again, what I'll do is click on the node so we can do a side by side. So I'm going to re enable this by clicking on V3. Now that we've addressed the luminance, we want to adjust the hue and the saturation. So in order to do that, we head back to our edit page. Let's make sure we select that gray layer. And one thing that you may have noticed is that in order to adjust our luminance, we chose color. What we're actually going to do is the opposite to assist with the other two. So what I can do is choose this drop down, and I'm going to choose luminosity. Now this footage may not make a lot of sense to you, but I'll show you exactly how we can use this to composite the footage. So let's head back to the color page. I'm going to scroll in a little bit on the footage just so maybe it's a little bit easier to see. Now, as I adjust the saturation, you'll see that her face becomes a little more prominent in the footage. And if I head in the other direction, it all but disappears. So what we want to do is get it to a place where it looks as if it fits into the footage. Once again, going back to what I said before, if there's something really saturated in the footage, you don't necessarily want to meet those saturation levels. You want something close to what the skin would look like. So let me fit this footage back into our window. And so far that's actually looking pretty good. If I look down here, it looks as if the saturation levels are pretty good. It is, this lamp is pretty saturated, but that could be the lighting. Obviously we can go ahead and make more adjustments. So let's disable that top layer. And I'm pretty happy with what that looks like. As I mentioned before, this lamp looks pretty saturated, but for what it is, I don't mind that type of saturation. I wouldn't want the skin as saturated as that light. In fact, let me bump up the saturation just so we can see what difference it would make and then I'll undo it. As I mentioned a moment ago, this really doesn't look natural. Her skin looks overly saturated, so I will undo it. And now we have both our luminance and our saturation in a good place. The next thing that we're going to address is hue. What I think I wanna do for this is add another layer and do what we did before. 
only because in this case, I want to toggle it off and on. Referencing what I mentioned before, what we wanna do here is look for something neutral in our footage. And the reason I say that is because her sweater here is a gray. So I wanna look for something that's potentially gray or a neutral color in the footage. There's a lot of white books in the footage and they're a bit orange. You'll notice that her sweater is almost a perfect gray. So what we can do in this case is maybe warm up the footage a little bit. Now, in order to adjust hue using the technique that we had before, we can use the same composite mode. In this case, I will enable the top layer. And I want to show you how if we adjust the temp, it will affect our footage. So if I make it a little bit warmer, and then if I end up making it a little bit cooler, you'll see what effect that has. When we're adjusting the temp, obviously you don't wanna to get to a place where it looks like this. And conversely, you don't wanna change the footage so that it looks like this. But there may be some difficulty here in the middle where you're not sure to what extent you want it to make it match the background. So instead of just guessing, let me disable this for a second and let's look for one of those neutral parts of our footage. So I'll choose this book right here. Maybe I'll put it near the edge of the frame there. And what we can do is match the sweater to this. So I'll re-enable that top layer. And you can see that's pretty orange over there. So let me adjust the temperature until it's closely matching what we have over there on the right hand side. I'm going to disable that top layer and that makes a lot more sense. Let me disable that layer so we can see a difference between what it looked like before and what it looked like with our adjustment. And if that's not too obvious, let me scroll in there. Now, the nice thing about this is if any of our other actions affected any adjustments we've made before, we can just come back and adjust those. So in other words, if we head back to saturation now, I'll enable this top layer. She might be a little bit too saturated now, so I'll dial back the saturation just a little bit. Re-enable our top layer. And now our footage is more realistically composited into our scene. Now I can do this with the nose, but I do have pretty much a duplicate of this over here on the left-hand side. So to do it before and after, what I'll do is click over here. You'll see what our footage looked like before. And then back to the adjustments that we made. This is what it looks like now. Heading back to our edit page, we no longer technically need this top layer. We're only using that as a check layer. So once we're done, all we have to do is delete that layer. In this case, what I'm going to do is move this over to the footage on the right hand side, because we're going to do the same exact thing over a different piece of footage. But as I mentioned, just to be clear, we don't need this on export. This only assisted us with all the adjustments that we made on our footage. So once we're done using this layer as reference, we can delete it. Before we take a look at some other footage, let's talk a little bit about the sponsor of this video, ArtGrid. ArtGrid is my choice to use when I want to find extremely high quality, royalty free footage. Let's say that you really like the background that I used in today's tutorial. On ArtGrid, you can find that clip, its associated clips, and then decide if there's another clip that may fit into your project a little bit better. Many times, if you need to include something in your video, you may not be able to go out and shoot the footage for yourself for a variety of reasons. This is where ArtGrid comes into play. Search for the footage that you need and choose some clips over on their website from their huge catalog. Use my link in the description below for two free months on top of a yearly subscription. Thanks for listening and thank you ArtGrid for being a sponsor. So here I want to use the same technique. Before we go back into the color page, I'm going to change this back to color. Now we could have left that on luminosity, but I do want to follow the technique the same way as we did with the other footage. So I'll make sure I have this selected. I'll enable this video track and let's head over to the color page so we can make our adjustments. I have my waveform opened. And I can see automatically that the brights on our footage is much brighter than any bright point in the footage in the back. So obviously I'm going to bring this down. Now it's too low, which is indicated in our footage. So all we have to do is make those brights match the brights in the background footage. I'll drag this up. It looks good on our waveform. I'll check over in our footage and it looks pretty good there too. And I think I'm pretty happy with that. Obviously, if we've gone too far, we can continue to make adjustments. Now, I just noticed that I accidentally did this on this node. Not a huge deal, 
that's just the node we happen to do our key on. So if we were to make changes or we needed to adjust the key, that may impact things. But again, for the sake of this tutorial, not a big deal. So I'll leave it the way that it is. Right click, add a new node. We'll delete that. Connect up our alpha outputs. And then now we can take a look at our saturation and our hue. So I'll change this over to our vector scope, head back to our edit page, change this over to luminosity, head back to our color page, and let's make some adjustments with saturation and keep an eye on our scopes. Let me see if I can expand this so it's a little bit larger. And if I lower the saturation and increase the saturation, you'll be able to determine which is the footage that we keyed. So in other words, if I really boost that saturation, obviously this part right here is the footage that we keyed because if I lower that saturation, it starts to get smaller. So we want to bring them in around the same range. And what I could do is bring that saturation back maybe just a little bit. I'm looking at the footage up here too. So using a combination of the scopes and looking at our footage, I think that our saturation levels are pretty good. So I'll close out of this. And just to check, I will disable that top layer. And I think that looks pretty good, but just to check side by side, I'll disable that node. And you can see how extremely saturated our original footage was. And this one fits in a lot better. So I'm pretty happy with our luminance levels and I'm pretty happy with the saturation. Obviously, let's go ahead and take a look at our hue now. I'm going to make a new node. Same thing as before, I will disable that. Connect these up. We can leave the top video layer the same because remember, that's the one that we can use for saturation and for hue. So I will enable that top layer. And first, let's see if we can determine if there's any hue adjustments just by looking at this footage. Because there are two people in this scene, we can compare them side by side. So if I adjust the temperature, we can get a pretty good feel on where the colors will reside. Let me disable that top layer. So let me fit this footage so that we can see everything. And now our footage looks as if it fits into our scene a lot better. Once again, just for a side by side, if I click here on the right hand side, that's our original footage where it really doesn't look like it fits in our scene at all and entirely stands out. And then back here, now it's a lot more realistic. Of course, once we're here, you don't necessarily need to continue to use that check layer. What that check layer will help you do is get to this point. Then you can come maybe over here into the curves and make some adjustments with hue versus hue, hue versus saturation, and things similar to that. And the other advantage of using the check layer is that you don't have to guess. I've seen a lot of tutorials out there where once the footage is composited on top, they'll suggest that you try to match everything by eye. Clearly there's nothing wrong with that. If you can get to a point where everything looks like it fits into the scene, then you don't have to worry about something like this. But if you wanna be extremely accurate and you wanna have a method to matching up the footage, you can use this technique too. Thanks for watching. I hope this was helpful. If it was, I'd appreciate if you share it. If you want to see more tutorials like this, please subscribe to the channel. If you have any suggestions for an upcoming tutorial, leave that in the comment section below. All my links are in the description below, and I'll see you in the next video.